Okay, this is LS540. My name is Simon Arisigueira Trilos. I'm your professor for this semester. And today, what I would like to do is talk a little bit about uh, uh, general definitions, general uh, conception about diversity and multicultural. And of course, tie that to the library setting. Okay, because uh, diversity and multicultural are two concepts that are everywhere and they affect uh, society in general and institutions in society. So, so they may and the processes in society too. For example, uh, there's diversity in our churches, there is a diversity in our agencies, there is a diversity in education and even within our family there is diversity. Like all, like always, uh, and and this is my idea, and you may or may not agree with my ideas. That's fine. Uh, but that's part of uh, being uh, uh, of respecting diversity. Is that I think uh, diverse? There, there has always been diversity, in my opinion, and because uh, again, and I think I mentioned this at the introductory introductory video or it may be in another class, in my, in, I consider diversity not only in terms of ethnic background, language, or race, but also I consider diversity uh, under a different set of criteria, such as a different worldview, different uh, church affiliation, gender identification, um, uh, social economic background, uh, education, educational level, etc., etc., etc. So, in my own uh, conception of diversity, a multicultural, a multicultural world, there are many criteria that we can use to see how groups of people or even individuals differ from one to another. And the idea in in uh, is that by understanding the, the diversity, we can offer the excellent, uh, the same excellent uh, level of excellence in terms of library services and library collections. So let's see some uh, formal definitions of what diversity is. For the first one, I have chosen uh, the Department of Interior of the US government, and they have a definition for diversity. And they say that the term diversity is used broadly to refer to many demographic variables. Okay, so here the first uh, key words are demographic variables. Okay, including but not limited to. So, so they have included some, but they are not limited to those the, to the ones uh, that they have defined here, or that uh, there are th that they have listed here in this uh, definition. Uh, race, race, religion, color, I guess they mean skin color, uh, but it, it may be eye colors too, or, or even uh, a hair color, gender, national origin, disability, sexual orient orientation, age, education, geographic origin and skill characteristics. To me, I, I, I put this definition here because it's, 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 it's a definition uh, that I, I agree with because I can see it, it is a very broad definition in terms of what diversity means, okay? So uh, I always look for this definition when I want to talk about diversity because it's not a matter only of national origin or race. Uh, diversity is a matter of age, education, sexual orientation, gender, geographic origin, skills, uh, skill characteristics, social economic background, etc. So, so as we can see, and as as I try to uh, point out in the homeworks that I have as, uh, assigned, we will see diversity almost everywhere. Even if in your town, uh, most of the people or all of the people share the same skin color or the same race or the same religion or the same national origin, I'm sure 
And uh, there is other ways to see that you live in a very diverse community. Of course, uh, there is a degree of diversity. It's not the same living in a small town America like I do here in Clarion uh, than living in New York City. Probably if I were in New York City or if I were in, in LA, uh, the degree of diversity will be uh, uh, higher than what I can found here in Clarion. However, if I look closely uh, to my community, I will see that there is a diversity. Very easily I can see a diversity when I look at churches here. Most, I think, and I don't have any, um, I don't have any, I only have the evidence that I have, I don't have any statistical evidence, but I think that uh, most of the uh, people here in Clarion, most of the community are Catholics, but you can see other churches as well. So there is a, a religious diversity here in my town. We have Catholics, we have uh, Episcopals, we have uh, Witness of Jehovah, we have Mormons, we have, we have other Christians, um, we have Orthodox uh, Christians, etc., etc., and we have uh, some uh, Muslims too, etc. So we have a diversity in terms of religion. When I look at my town too, I see a diversity in terms of gender or, 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 or sexual orientation. We have women, we have female, we have males, we have transgen transgenders, we have gays, and we may have other uh, sexual orientations too. Uh, so we have a, even we have organized groups within the university with different uh, sexual orientations. So we have a diverse, in term, a, 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 uh, it is a diverse community in terms of sexual orientation. Age-wise is the same. I see lots of uh, old people or middle-aged people, but I see a lot of children too, young adults, adolescents, etc. The same with education. I see a lot of uh, college professors that may have a PhD or they may have gone through grad school and I see other people who only have a high school diploma or even don't have a high school diploma. Geographic origin. Mostly what I see here in my town, town they come from, the, they have the same geographic origin. However, they have a different uh, ethnic background. Uh, and I have talked to them because I love diversity and I love to know about back backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds or national backgrounds, about different uh, uh, ways to cook meals, uh, play instruments, uh, musical instruments, etc. So there's a lot of uh, 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 German uh, background, uh, there's some Polish, Italian and so on. Uh, of course, uh, from England, but we have people from Scotland, or me, we may have people from other areas, uh, uh, not in England, but in the in the British Isles, so, such as um, uh, Irish and so on. So we have a, a diverse uh, national origin here in my town. So this is what I want you to, to see in your own community and to think about your own community and how much diversity there is there. In terms of skills, it, it is the same. So, what we have to understand, and here it is very interesting that they point this out, this is America's diversity has given this, is, this country its unique strength, resilience, and richness. And I agree with that, and I think this, that that applies for every other country that has a, a, a large degree of diversity. Okay, and like I said too, when we look at diversity, please don't look this as a limitation. Quite the contrary, diversity means an opportunity, and especially for our profession. Okay, let's see another definition here and see what other elements we we can find. Uh, this definition comes from uh, uh, Luther Edu. So he says diversity encompasses complex, oh, this is very interesting, complex differences in perspective. So here is not only that we are, uh, we, can, we can see in the outside, but also we can see different worldviews, different per perspective, identity, points of view, 
among individuals that make up the wider, I, I would take out this word wider, but that make up the community. So we have perspective, points of view, and identity. This is even a more uh, global or general definition that I also like, especially because it takes into account points of view. Okay, Diversity includes important and interrelated dimensions of human identity, such as race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, nationality, citizenship, religion, sexual orientations, uh, sexual orientation, I'm sorry, ability and age. These differences are important to understand, but can, they cannot be used to predict any individual's values, choice or response. And this is very interesting too. I love this definition because it talks about points of view. So we have to understand that each person may have a different point of view. However, even though that we may understand the differences, we cannot predict any response or any values. In other words, um, uh, we cannot profile by color or by religion uh, anybody because they may have a different point of view, they may have a different worldview, even though they may, they may or may not belong to a diverse group, okay? So it, that's a, a consideration that we have to take into, into account too, okay? So let's not do uh, what they call profiling, okay? Uh, because you are black, or because you are Latino, or because you are Italian, you uh, you like uh, you know spicy food, for example. They always ask me uh, because I'm Latino if I like Mexican spicy food. Well, I don't. But they the people tr uh, made that association between being Latino and Mexican food. No, I I I actually don't like Mexican food that much. I have I have. Uh, in my home country, we have never eaten Mexican food, so so for me, I learned about Mexican food when I came to the U.S. many many years ago. So, but still, uh, many of my friends make that association. You, if you're a Latino, you most like Mexican food, and you like uh, mariachi music, and you like spicy food. Well, I don't. And sometimes and this is really funny. By the way, I, I you know I'm open to any conversation about. Uh, uh, diversity because I love this thing and that makes many of my friends disappointed because they were expecting me to like things like that and if, because I don't well you know they, they feel disappointed in their own knowledge in their own uh, cultural knowledge but it is very hard to make any prediction or if you come from Brazil then you oh you must be a great soccer player well pro you probably you don't like soccer you like American football or you like tennis, you don't have to like soccer because you come from Brazil, for example. And these are only examples, of, okay? That I think are, 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 you know, everybody makes mistakes and it, it, it has no consequence, in my opinion, okay? There are others that are more sensitive. I don't have any sensitivity in that regard. Quite the contrary. Uh, I love to talk about these uh, issues and, and I have no... Uh, uh, um, uh, sensitivities or special sensitivities and so on. I like music and I may like music from Mexico, but I like music, for, uh, my favorite music may be uh, you know, American music or classical music, the great uh, German and Austrian composers, for example, or I like opera, you know. So, so it has nothing to do with my ethnic background. But Anyway, we are diverse. We all are diverse. We have our own preferences. And I like this definition especially because it, 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 uh, it takes into consideration points of view. We have different points of view. We have different worlds, world views. We see the world differently. Of course, there are elements that unite us all. Uh, because if we were all t so different, we couldn't live together. There are some elements that are shared among humanity. And there are some ethical and moral principles that are shared among humanities. Okay, uh, And we all share, uh, at least most of all, share the same 
uh, values and principles. Okay, and we can discuss what those values are. Uh, you know, you may have a different opinion than mine, but I believe that we all should uh, share, for example, the value of the human life and the freedom of expression. You know, to me, that's a universal value or you know things like that and and there are many others too but uh, there there must be some common values among humans because if not we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to to live in a society and we do but anyway uh, these issues of diversity and multi, multi multiculturalism are very interesting and of course uh, this it is a reality okay so we have to understand that these, these are real issues that, um, as I said before, affect any institution, any process uh, in society. And, of course, li the, libraries, the library is an American institution, it's a world institution, but especially it's an American institution, and it affects how we uh, carry out business in our libraries. Now let's see what uh, what we have in terms of multicultural. It's, it says all people live in an increasingly heterogeneous society, and I, by the way, I may uh, challenge that. And in my opinion, heterogeneous, meaning that we live in an increasingly uh, a different society, or, or where there are many. To, it's the diversity is increasing. I challenge that. I think we, I would, I would say totally. Um, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion. I would say that all people live in an increasingly homogeneous society. Okay, so this is a definition that comes from IFLA, which is the International Federation of Library Associations, but. I don't agree with that. I would challenge this and put here homogeneous. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to explain why. And again, uh, your opinion may differ and I'm challenging it here that comes from Ifla, okay? Because I have a different opinion. I think uh, what what I am seeing today is that with with the globalization process and globalization and uh, of course media, television, radio, uh, the, the multimedia, the internet, and now with social media, I think what we are seeing is that we are becoming more homogeneous. in terms of our opinions, in, term, in terms of our worldviews, in terms of our what we like and we don't like. Why? Because I think the heterogeneous quality was always there uh, in the past, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, 500 years ago, uh, a thousand years ago we were heterogeneous and there was little contact between heterogeneous populations. Of course in Europe and in the Middle East probably there was more contact between different uh, cultures. But if we go back enough, let's say a thousand years ago, in the Americas we have many different groups of, um, of um, of people, they weren't called Americans because this is before the age of discovery, that probably didn't have any contact with each, with each, with each other in the American continent. Uh, I'm calling it the American continent because I don't have any other way to call it. But in this continent, there were many different groups of people that have different cultures and have different languages different music, different, uh, they cook different, and maybe they have different religions, re religious, uh, religion too. For example, uh, well-known examples are the Mayas in Central America, the Incas in Peru, or the Aztecs in, uh, in Mexico. But there were 
other few hundred uh, groups, you know, that uh, that are that were there, but may not be as well known. So it was very heterogeneous. Now, with the age of discovery, with the travels uh, in the 1500s and 1600s, and later. Uh, with other uh, uh, ways of uh, uh, traveling, such as the plane or the railroads, etc., then as, and then uh, media, and then mass media, and then multimedia, and then social media. I think the the heterogeneous quality is not increasing; it's decreasing. Actually, we are becoming more and more the same unfortunately for me or, or fortunately for other people but I like to see difference I like to see diversity but I think we're becoming more like you know we we look like each other more and um, increasingly more and more because now clothing has become uh, globalized food has become globalized music has has become globalized sports have become globalized so I think uh, with the process of globalization, uh, in my opinion, diversity, it's becoming, uh, uh, it's uh, becoming uh, less of an issue. It's, it's, it's still a very large issue. But in terms of cultural diversity or ethnic diversity, I think it's uh, decreasing to a certain degree. Okay. But that's my opinion. So, because it is my opinion, and this is a quote that I have here, I'm going to put this in a different color. So you know, it's my, it's my ideas. Again, you you may disagree with me, and you may agree with Ifla. According to Ifla, there are more than six thousand different languages in the world, and I think what what is going to happen is that the number of languages will be decreasing because either now you know we speak English or speak Spanish or French and in the future we may all speak Chinese for all I know or or, or some type of uh, Hindi language from India so the diversity in terms of languages may be decreasing okay I don't think there is there is I don't believe in, by the way, I'm not a historian or an anthropologist. I'm a sociologist, but so, but I don't believe that there are any new languages developing in the world. I don't think so. On the contrary, I think they are uh, the diversity in terms of languages are is decreasing. But uh, I I don't have again, I don't have any any evidence. But in any case. Uh, there are 6,000 different languages in the world, okay? The international migration rate is growing every year. That, I'm not sure, uh, it may be decreasing too, resulting in an increasing number of people with complex identities. That, that I believe is true. We, we, have, we are very complex beings, and we don't have one identity. We have multiple and complex identities all of us you don't have to be an immigrant or you don't have to uh, uh, go from uh, to live in another place to be a com to have com multiple and complex identities okay here it says globalization and this is what i meant here up here in terms of homogeneous increased migration faster communication ease of transportation and other 21st century forces have increased cultural diversity I also uh, uh, will challenge that in my opinion it has the it those 21st century forces have decreased cultural diversity but that's beside the beside the point because diversity is a reality anyway in many nations where it might not have been previously existed, I believe that, that every community, every nation has a diverse population. And I already explained what is my criteria 
in understanding what diversity means. It's not only about ethnic background or uh, skin color, no. It goes, uh, it has many other dimensions. In many nations where it might not have previously existed or, or has augmented the existing multicultural makeup. In any case, uh, it doesn't matter what my opinion is uh, here, but what it matters is that IFLA, which is the International Federation of Libraries, have taken into consideration the issue of multicultural um, uh, and diversity in our libraries. And I will be presenting, I don't know if in today's lecture or in the next lecture, a document on that, uh, on that idea. Uh, because it's very interesting and it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a study guide that we can follow uh, for this class. Now, how do we tie multicultural and, and diverse communities and diverse population with libraries? Well, we have to think about uh, these things here. By the way, the, 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 the document that we're going to explore here, I'm going to explore with you and I'll be commenting and, and reading from that document and of course it, it, it will be posted in your D2L but I will be presenting that document by parts because there are, there are I'm, I'm going to present some of it now because there are some things that are interested, uh, interesting for the future. This information comes from that document. Uh, provides a basis for the planning of library services to all groups in the community. So the idea here is that once we understand the diversity in our community, we have to plan for library services and collections to, to provide an excellent uh, service to all the members in our community. Okay, that's very important. Secondly, it provides criteria against which of the which the ad adequacy of existing multi multicultural services may be assessed. And by the way, all these criteria have to come from a co an, a co uh, community analysis. Provide an equitable basis for the acquisition of materials and the provision of services. This is logic. If you understand what the diversity in your community is, well, you have to have a library collection uh, robust, uh, 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 strong to provide uh, information sources to, the, to that diversity in that community. Encourage understanding and engagement among the multicultural groups represented in all societies. And that's, that it is very important. What we want to have, or at least uh, this is the course for where I, I will be a a advocacy and I we I'll, I will advocacy for diversity in our libraries diversity in our collections and diversity in our services and I will also um, uh, think that we have to encourage and that's one of the missions of the library uh, in, uh, understanding and engagement among the cultural groups represented in our community why and how? Well, we, we, may, we may have some special programs to uh, encourage that understanding of our diversity. Now, let me show you uh, the document that I think is very important. Let me put it in here. Okay, It was published in 2009. It's called Multicultural Com Communities Guideline for Library Service. And of course, this is posted in, your, in the D2L, so you don't have to look for it. And I got some information from here, but this is a document that uh, I'm going to, in the next, uh, in my next lecture, I'm going to explore in more detail. Because there is one thing that uh, is very important. Let me get there. We're going to go into, the, into detail later, but one thing that I, I think is very, very important. Everything is important, but is this. And this is important if if you if if you're a li uh, uh, if you're if you're going to be a librarian or if you're a librarian already, when you're going to do 
when you're to, going to program your services and you're, uh, you're going to manage your collection. You have to have a analysis needs within the community and you have to do a community analysis. This is something that I, that I teach in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the LS501, which is um, uh, uh, collection development or collection management. Because in order to, uh, to see what your community is or to understand what your community is, you have to analyze your community. And of course, how do you analyze your community? Well, there, are, there is a methodology to do that. Of course, it is great that you have um, uh, statistical uh, information about your community in terms of age, gender, uh, ethnic background, race, social economic status, education, etc. And then there is observations, there are surveys, uh, there are uh, uh, interviews that you can do in order to analyze your community and who, who, what groups are part of your community. And why do you have to do that? Well, you have to do that in order to have the services and to provide information sources to tend the needs of your community members okay and that it is crucial we cannot understand uh, diversity if we don't understand the community we serve for example if i'm here in clarion and uh, and and i my the latino population but let's say i'm in a town where there's no spanish speaking uh, community or a latino population so am I going to buy and I have a large uh, Chinese population or Indian popula population or, or a Vietnamese population? Well, if I'm going to spend my money uh, managing, my, or managing or developing my collection, I'm not going to spend, spend too much money buying uh, Spanish speaking uh, Spanish uh, books. I will be buying uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, books or Germans or or you know whichever is uh, are the part I mean uh, so I can uh, answer uh, to the needs of my community if they are German speaking or Vietnamese speaking or Chinese speaking and within the Latino community that may be a problem too because like, like I said in my own personal example uh, I uh, when we were talking about music and about food, I don't like Mexican uh, food, for example. So if you're going to buy some cookbooks for the Latino community, you better know what Latino community are we talking about. Because we are all different. We are not the same community, though we are identified as Latinos, but we are not all the same. We have different uh, cultures, uh, we have different uh, ways of speaking, we have different uh, needs of information. Okay, So we have to know who the members of our community are in order to provide the services and to provide the collections that, uh, that they need to solve uh, their information needs or information problems. Okay, so this is very important, and I think in the next uh, uh, lecture I'm going to go into a little bit more about community analysis. We are going to uh, address these points here, and uh, of course how that uh, affects uh, library collections and library services. Okay, I think this is enough for today, and I will be seeing you soon.